to Make it easy and I'll hold it against you I'm on a string dangling right in front of you Make it hard and I'll run away Keep tomorrow as I kill today Trying to figure just what I deserve Hello everybody, welcome back to another fun-filled action-packed episode of Hexes and Soldiers Case Study Number 2 This will deal with Command as the cat bats the mouse and the neighbor plays the bass and uh, the window unit pumps away. Let's see if we can make something of this after all. Cut right to the chase. Not sure who the music was at the intro. Um, so I'll leave that at that. But uh, So dealing with command, and again, uh, if this is your first time listening to the uh, case study episodes, the whole thing that sparked these off is the... Uh, design and development of, of advanced platoon leader <clears throat> and as I come across concepts and things and um, delve further into them I thought maybe I would share with you guys my findings some of them rather so when it comes to command we'll start with <clears throat> squad leader and before I get into that I guess I should clarify what do I mean by command well <clears throat> I am speaking specifically upon the tactical level Usually, uh, if not abstract, there is something uh, within the game <clears throat> that allows for some sort of command uh, mechanic. Uh, typically, this takes the form of a command range that a, say, leader exerts <clears throat> a number of hexes. Again, typically, that's how it's dealt with, but not always. So, with squad leader, it uh, roundabout way deals with command by allowing for same hex leader benefits so if you're stacked with somebody they benefit from your skills as a leader and this affects group fire as well as individual uh, squads within the same hex and then <clears throat> if we could jump forward to ASL, but specifically SASL or Solitaire Advanced Squad Leader, they've got a standard command range of two hexes for a leader that is in, now it has to be in good order and unpinned. It can't just be a leader. He has to be a leader that is good order and unpinned. I like it. Additionally, a leader may not exert his command over a higher ranked leader. So they actually uh, reflect rank within this thing and that's cool as well now the way this works uh, is for a squad to perform an action the leader exerting command influence must pass a command die roll and I really like all of this it works it's realistic it might be a bit much as far as die rolls but uh, then again maybe not you get used to it it's it serves a worthy purpose the die roll it's not superfluous so I like it that is Solitaire Advanced Squad Leader. Then you have... Well, Conflict to Heroes deals with it in a different way. Now, for those of you that haven't played it, they don't have leaders. And I think me and Steve Overton have talked about this uh, in the past, that Conflict to Heroes is, is a fine and dandy game, but there's no freaking leaders. And I think the word he used was um, not as nice. No, I agree with you, Steve. There's no leaders, and uh, when <clears throat> Uwe says, well, you're the leader, yeah, but uh, that's kind of a cop-out, I guess. Uh, so, <clears throat> the game works. It's a fine game. I like it. I enjoy it. I'd recommend it to anybody. Uh, it wasn't particularly hard for me to get over the absence of leaders. It was awkward, a little weird, but I fell right in just fine, <clears throat> and... Um, of course, if you haven't played Conflict of Heroes, I guess you could say they deal with command by allowing for command action points or caps, which can be used to supplement action points, uh, die rolls, things like that. So it's in there, but not the way that you would expect it to be. <clears throat> and uh, that brings us to Combat Commander. Which basically says that normally uh, an order or op fire action will only activate a single unit. But 
an activated leader can further activate all, some, or none of the units within its command radius. So the command radius is printed right on the counter there for your convenience, and that would be anything from zero to two hexes, zero being the same hex. I uh, skipped over one. Old school tactical has the command range again printed right on the leader counter. <clears throat> Units must be in command to, quote, get the benefits of leadership for rally and spotting roles. And the command range here can vary from one to four hexes. Uh, commissars have a four hex command range. So very simplistic command range for um, old school tactical. <clears throat> GMT's Panzer, briefly, now this is a slightly bigger scale, but still small unit action, uh, has within the advanced rules the following command ranges. Uh, elite has two hexes, Veteran 1, Seasoned 1, Regulars, and Green have a zero hex or same hex command range. That's 6.2.1.1.3. I think they got a little carried away with the points. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> Lock and Load Heroes of the Pacific. A leadership range of 1 is included for purposes of unit activation and is decreased by 1 if the leader is wounded. Now, before I hop to the next one, I will preface it by saying uh, somewhat involved what fighting formations has done with command, but uh, I, I like it and I've said before I like for fighting formations better than combat commander call me crazy uh, but I do so fighting formations you got a whole page dealing with this stuff uh, with command <clears throat> starts with uh, page 7 4.1 well four point command markers and the 4.1 available command at the start of every game, command markers are uh, allotted to each player, are placed in their respective color-coded available command box. Located on the track display, let's see, markers are also placed in the available command box when entering play as reinforcements. Should always have their mission side face up when occupying an available command box. All of a player's available command is eligible to be placed on the map as desired. Now. 4.2, placing available command. A player may at any time place any number of his available command into one or more hexes of the map. While a command occupies a map hex, it is no longer considered quote-unquote available and is instead active. Command are always placed on the map, initially with their quote-unquote mission side face up at the end of every game turn. All mission command on the map are flipped to their tactical side after existing tactical command are reset to the pending box. Now... Here we go, command radius. All friendly active command have a command radius equal to that side's current command and control level. A command radius is counted in hexes. Well, you all know what that is. Um, a command marker serves to pull all friendly units within its command radius under either mission command or tactical command, depending on which side of the marker is currently face up. Mission command trumps tactical command for friendly units finding themselves under both types and friendly units outside the command radius of all friendly active command markers are deemed out of command. Now what are the benefits of being a command here? Um, two main benefits. First of all, when he is the active player, the initiative cost to activate a unit for an order is redu reduced to one if that unit is under tactical command or reduced to zero if that unit is under mission command. And when he is the inactive player, the initiative cost to perform return fire or op fire with a unit is reduced to one. The cat just destroyed my ASL pocket rule book. Uh, if that unit is under tactical command or reduced to zero, if the unit is under mission command, mission command trumps tactical command. Now, here's the interesting thing. You can move the command marker. Uh, whenever a unit moves or advances, an active command marker sharing its hex may accompany it. Units may actually pick up and drop off friendly command at any point along their route, and a command marker that exits the map along with a friendly unit is also removed from the game. You can voluntarily uh, remove the command marker. Um, you can capture command. So they have an interesting way of dealing with it, and again, I, I, I like it 
it might seem a little involved, and I guess it is, but you play the game a couple times, it's, it's not a problem. So innovative way of dealing with it, fighting formations. I don't know that anybody else deals <coughs> with command in this respect. Um, if I remember correctly, I looked at Band of Brothers. I don't know that I saw anything in there of note worth relating to you. Okay, first of all, I take umbrage with uh, Band of Brothers and the fact that the rules do not have uh, a <coughs> an index or a table of contents, so it's fun to flip through and look for things. But uh, other than that, which I guess is a minor minor problem, <coughs> uh, they have something in here, uh, 4.1 operations range, which, and they admit, abstractly represents the command and control capabilities of an army, as well as its flexibility and leadership. It is given on the scenario card and is a number range. So, for example, an army that had an operations range of three to six in a scenario would have to use a minimum of three units and a maximum of six units before the other side would be allowed to use units. And it goes on to explain in depth how you do this. So now nah, they don't really address command much. That's fine. Game works well without it, but APL is going to have it. So what do you guys think? Command, uh, specifically command range or some sort of mechanic reflecting um, leaders, their ability to... Uh, again, within a certain range, dictate or bark orders at a, at a squad. What do you think about that? What should be the um, what should be the uh, limits of this within APL? What do I have so far? I, I'm not even sure off the top of my head. I'm all over the map with this thing, so I'll work on one aspect for a while, and then when I get tired of that, burn out. I'll work on another aspect. Here we go, command range. Da, 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 right here. So, so far, and again, subject to change, command range, what I have for APL or advanced platoon leader. <coughs> Each leader has a command range equal to his morale plus any die roll modifier he may have. Now, that's definitely going to change. Um, because that's proven to be a little too generous. Each squad has a command range equal to his morale. Yeah, that's all going to change. Generally, squads must remain within command range of their platoon leader. If they move out of command range, what's the rub? Well, they must attempt to move within command range on the next activation. Units that are out of command may only conduct one action as opposed to the normally being able to conduct two and are unable to borrow their leader's inherent action points. Now, within this uh, APL, leaders have two inherent action points that are not uh, you're not required to roll for they have them every turn they can use them on themselves or lend them to other units within command and based on other certain restrictions so tentatively that's how I have command within <coughs> advanced platoon leader so that's it for this uh, episode the second episode of um, case study number two command uh, upcoming episodes, got some ideas here. Uh, actually, I thought I would hit random events before I did this, but it uh, didn't happen that way, so you can expect something regarding random events. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba, possibly um, <coughs> casualty results, such as unit losses, morale checks, suppression, all the above. So, <coughs> at least a couple more of these things coming. And uh, again, uh, Big Board, Kev Sharp, thank you for responding to the last uh, case study, the first one. Appreciate that. We'll also appreciate any uh, further reaction to this one and uh, anybody else out there who cares to chime in their two cents, um, you are welcome and encouraged to do so. So that's it for this episode of uh, Hexes of Soldiers case study number two. Until next time, thanks for listening and keep gaming. One, two. it easy and I'll hold it against you I'm on a string dangling right in front of you Make it hard and I'll run away Keep tomorrow as I kill today Trying to figure just what I deserve
flashing lines all across the earth. Patience only makes the dream come true. Everything I see, I hold to you. Tell me, this is it, the truly great thing, the love you've hoped to find. Any doubt will simply wipe itself out as we're rising deeper than first and last time. Lift me up and drop me down again. Every day I feel confusion, pain. And love is what we've all been waiting for. There's something powerful to smash it all. All the world will tell you you're all wrong Big, big deal if you're wrong This is it, the truly great thing The love you've hoped to find And any doubt will simply wipe itself out So rising deeper than first and last time